Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Mimi. Oh my goodness. At long last, I've got Greg, Mike, and Eric all together in the same Zoom sphere. This is yeah, exciting. Yeah, it only took three months. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Yeah, I mean, that's actually not so bad. I, I realize I should have just... Really? Like, <laughs> well... <laughs> I mean, I really I'll bear that just... in mind for the future, Mimi. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. <laughs> Three, <laughs> four people's schedule is very challenging to coordinate across time zones. Fair enough. Right? So, yeah. but I realize I should have just cornered you all in Portland and be like, we're podcasting now. No choice. <laughs> <laughs> that probably would have been wisest. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, which reminds me, it was awesome to see everybody. And and when I was thinking about that earlier, I was like, oh, you know, this is how you know there's just a level of comfort. Greg was so kind, had us all over, and Jen was so lovely to make chili. And there was a moment we were all sitting in Greg's living room in complete silence because we were so tired and exhausted. <laughs> and it was like 10 minutes. It felt like 10 minutes of silence. And I I, I actually, it was the first time I'd met you, Mike. So, But I just looked over mm -hmm. and we just looked at each other and it was like, we're tired. <laughs> it's yep, exhausted. Yeah. We're exhausted. It was a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It Cold was a day. day. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you all have known each other uh, quite a while. So, but that, that just had a, a shared level of comfort to me when you could sit in complete silence and be fine. <laughs> you Greg have new art up. Huh? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I just uh, say Greg Eric, and Eric was saying nice things. Yeah. Eric and was I saying was, nice things. Uh, I'll stop yeah. now. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That was the one. That'll um, teach me. <laughs> yeah. That's your quota. <laughs> well, uh, thanks thanks for getting together to be here to chit chat. And uh, another fun thing from Rose City, of course, was your pulp friction panel, which you you so cleverly had uh, half the room thinking they were there for the film for pulp fiction. Quentin Tarantino, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that was uh, that 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 was a, a stroke of Ben Saunders' genius. <laughs> too um, genius. That's the problem. Yeah, too genius, much genius. Geni Genius in italics there. Um, <laughs> this is the problem with uh, this is the problem with really smart academics. Um, they're 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 a little too clever for their own good, <laughs> um, and 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 that one bit him. Um, <laughs> but you know, we maybe picked up a half dozen new readers, so I'll yeah. take it. Well, you know, to be fair, when he asked for a raise of hands, everyone was there because they're like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, Greg Rucka is doing Pulp Fiction now. So this sounds really exciting. <laughs> 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 they were there for you, Greg. They were there for you and Mike and Eric. I mean, but like they were like, oh, there's there's a new comic. And it is true. A lot of our um humans in the room had not yet heard of The Forged, but I heard that they ran over to the table and you guys were sold out that weekend. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Too, pretty, pretty sold. Pretty quickly after that panel, yeah. I don't have a I don't have any copies of, of the first trade anymore. Um, okay. Oh, wow. yeah, nice. which is which is an odd thing for me. Uh normally I have oh an inordinate amount of trades in the basement. And uh I don't have we, we it's funny because um I don't have a lot of issues of the forged either like i have no copies of the trade i think i only have like two or three personal copies left of issue one um i think i have about that many of two i don't think i have any of three um like of those uh, that initial run it's like gone um and then it starts to climb back up in the post con <laughs> delivery season yeah. but but yeah, it's um I guess it says something about uh the 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 brilliance with which we handled the launch of the book. Um <laughs> that, 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 I know, let's wait until social media is completely fractured and launch our book. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's let uh and, and and let's maintain the not participating in the Nazi uh social media sphere. Um yeah, so 
hopefully, you know, we'll pick up another six or seven readers with this podcast, you know, if, if we're entertaining. <laughs> um, Being that half, over half the listeners are already readers of this, I feel like. Like I said. You know. <laughs> you know, by the time we finish, we're going to have a lot of people reading the book. Um, Plenty. Yeah, that, that last issue is going to just. Put us on the map. That'll be it. <laughs> yeah, we will have uh, arrived. You, just about you all the time are, we leave. So. You all are hilarious. No. So it, it's it's interesting, though, because when you first kind of launched, okay, this is the new comics coming out. And it was this like um, this big team of all these humans that I adore. And I'm reading about it. And it's like space opera on steroids. And it's like <laughs> comics you tried to hide from your parents. And, you know, love letter to old school Pulp Fiction and and et cetera. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like you've got quite an audience there with just, just that alone. And you got a lot of generous reviews and and humans who really were excited about this especially you know that first one hit and you know we kid about the social media machine and and mm -hmm. and all of the negativity but it, it it does feel like there was a definitive um desire for audiences to just have something fun and and just with badass characters like who doesn't love all of the elements that you've thrown in there and so i feel like you guys kid about your your readership well but... well, well well i mean you're not wrong but there's something else going on because now yeah. we got to talk about the economics and how comics are working these days and so on the people right. who have found the book as best as we can tell like it yeah the people who have found the book and don't like it, we can't tell, right? <laughs> I mean, we're not right. hearing from them. Right. Um, but people are having difficulty finding the book. Like the sheer number of people at Rose City, for instance, who came up and were like, oh, I didn't even know this existed. Yeah. Is is a problem. So, you know, and, and it, it's funny because we spend a lot of time um in in the run up to the launch trying to figure out how we could promote the book and how we could promote the book in a way that was not for us morally or ethically compromising and you know we we shelled out we did a mini comic there was a little mini that that Mike drew and that Nolan colored and Ariana lettered little tiny thing um and you know we paid we paid to make that out of our own pocket to print it we did a mailing that Eric designed you know in his wonderful you know graphic design style that was this retailer letter on one side and on the flip side was a message from evil right and it had a qr code to where you could get the first three issues in a dropbox completed and we sent that out to a good 60 70 retailers um and as far as i know not a one of them uh scanned the qr code or, or maybe even read the email you know i mean the, the promotion right now is a really challenging thing it's a very difficult wow. thing and I do believe I'm talking a lot, but you know me, Mamie. I do this anyway. <laughs> um, I, I I do believe that people who find the book are engaged by the book. They like it. They want it. Um, but a lot of retailers just weren't ordering the damn thing, and that's mm. part of the reason why we sold out so quickly on issue one. Yeah, we didn't sell yeah. out so quickly on issue one because we had printed a hundred thousand and a hundred thousand sold. We sold out on issue one on the day of release because a lot of people went into their comic book stores, saw the book for the first time on a shelf or on a counter and said, oh, I'm getting this. Mm -hmm. Right. And the retailers who had ordered two or three or four of them at the most were suddenly like, well, I'm out. Yeah. Right. And that's not me throwing mud at retailers right they're trying to they're trying to get a business model that works for them yeah and many of them are going to be cautious for very good reasons but 
they knew the book was coming. It was in right. the catalog. It was yeah. there. Their job was to know what was coming. And if they're doing their job well, it's to know their readership yeah. and to be able to turn to their people that, you know, their regulars and say, hey, you like Henderson's work. Um, he's got this new thing coming exactly. out. Exactly. Do you do you want issue one in your box? So, you know, uh, we'll be back. What is it? April? We'll be back. With I believe so. Issue April, seven in April. Yeah. Yeah. We just we just draw. We just sent in the solicits. And, you know, that'll be our third arc. The second trade will have come out in, in advance of it. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully by that point, you're in far enough that people who are only reading trades, maybe they'll move to picking up the monthlies and, right. and so on. So, well, it know. was perfect because, you know, it took us three months to do this one. So I'll schedule <laughs> now so that we can make sure we podcast before the, the new one comes out, guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a, you know, we'll for do, those six we'll or seven preview. extra readers you guys get from my from my listenership, which I will say, hopefully, um, you know, six or seven is a good strong six or seven. So we'll <laughs> take it. All right. So question for you, um, for all of you, and we'll just kind of go around as we did at Rose City on, on our very fun surprise panel where friends of Rucka kind of showed up, which thank you guys, by the way, for leaving the booth yeah. and thank coming you out to come <laughs> and, and hang out with us. It was actually so much fun. It um, would have been really bad if friends of Rucka had been an empty room, let me tell you. So <laughs> I, I'm great. Grateful, if nothing else. Oh, now, now. <laughs> there were more people that wanted to be there, but scheduling and all that, you know, they're like, oh, yeah. oh man, I missed the thing, didn't I? So there were a lot of people that were going to show up, a lot more people, rather. I, I would have needed like extra stage. So it was just perfect. Mm -hmm. But um, talking about comics you tried to hide from your parents, I would like to know what those were uh, for each of you, because I, I can just opt out because I'm a late bloomer when it comes to comics. I, I just started. Yeah, you uh, were past that. I was past yeah. that. You know, I was already in my own home. So but what, Eric, we'll start with you, because I'm sure right. you have a list. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, and uh, this reminds me slightly of the time in my 30s when my mom uh went to, i had come to visit and she went to pour me a drink and i told her everything in her liquor cabinet for the last 15 years or so had been water and uh <laughs> and she hadn't noticed um so here here we go again uh so one of the this was kind of later in the my my teen um comics fandom but marvel had to, and i'm going to apologize now because my idiot dog is in his crate and he'll be making noise um uh Marvel had done an original graphic novel uh, Punisher one called uh, return to big nothing. And it wasn't released as a normal floppy. It was originally released as a nice little slim hardcover. Mike Zek drew it. I forget who wrote it. Um, and it was uh, much more violent than the regular Punisher comics. And uh, um, yeah, mom would have objected greatly to that one. Um, there was also a, a brief moment where uh, Frank uh, has sex. So that that wouldn't have gone over huge either when I was like 12, 13. Uh, so there's that one. I did have a heavy metal tucked away somewhere that I don't even remember what the issue was, but it was full of boobs. There was lots of boobs. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I managed to, lots. Ma yeah, managed to keep that one hidden for a long time. Those are probably the two big offenders was that Punisher and uh and a couple of heavy metals I'd squirreled away. <laughs> Fair enough. Next. All right, Mike. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I didn't have a, a local comic shop when I was a kid. Uh, they didn't, there wasn't one in my area until I was, I don't know, 16, 17, maybe. Um, but I did have a couple of dog-eared heavy metals as well that were just kind of tough. If my dad found them, he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll hang on to this for a while. And my mom wouldn't have <laughs> loved it. Um yeah, I don't remember the, the specific issues or even the artists that were in them. But yeah, I had a few of those squirreled away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, Greg. Very, the, the impressionistic age. The one that I'm thinking of, um, I'm sure there were more. I had a issue of Marvel's Epic Magazine. Um, and I, I, I can't even... Like if I saw the cover, I would be able to go, it's that one. Yeah. Um, and I 
don't really remember the stories in it very well, but there was one that was a black and white, don't know who drew it, where clearly, uh, and it was a woman in her home, the whole narrative is a little short eight pager, um, of, of this woman sort of in her, you know, somewhere in New England autumnal home at night, and she is moving through the house and you're looking at all these creatures sort of spying on her through like the windows and so on. And um, as she's getting ready for bed and the model that the artist had used was very clearly Adrian Barbeau. Nice. Was, was obviously Adrian Barbeau. And um, I remember distinctly, this is too much information. You get the long answers from me. Um, there, there was a panel where she uh, is taking a bath and it's one of those romantic solo relaxing bubble baths where she's lit some candles and so on. And I remember, I, I must have been very young. I remember being fascinated by the amount of effort this artist had put into capturing not just her breast, not just this bare breast, but the nipple. Right. Like like uh, like every uh, every crinkle and crease lovingly detailed. And then this the story, the punchline of the story is her, you know, out of the bath and she's got a robe on and like she, you know, opens a door or whatnot. And there's like the big lumbering monster and she tells it off. She's like, what have I told you about staying outside? And like, that's the gag. Right. It undermines the whole threat thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was a story that I was like. And it was all because of a breast, which is the most American hang up ever, right? It's like, oh my God. I was a just going to say this. Yeah. I, I was going to say the nothing, same thing. It, it's uh, fascinating. We've all grew up very clearly in different households and, and different, maybe even eras and whatnot. But like, it's so strange to me that a country like the United States, which is supposed to be so, you know, progressive, but like, Nudity is still so. Have you been you following like, the news, Mimi? Yeah, I mean, I you're know, right. in well, Florida. You, uh, yeah, I get it. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, we're like, we are all describing the same thing. It's like when you're watching, you know, HBO back in the day at home, and like you don't, your parents walk in on RoboCop where everyone's bodies parts are flying, and yeah. you're like, yeah, okay, no problem. But if there was like one of those '80s sex scenes, you're just like, oh god, this is super awkward. Yeah. Like you, you really didn't want to get busted. So it's just. It's it's fascinating because that still re seems to resonate no matter who, when, wh what you were growing up. Like that was the thing that was kind of like cringeworthy for your parents to catch you with, which is we're not interesting because it's, so right? <laughs> yeah. it's so natural, right? It's so natural, and you're like, oh. but it's perfectly fine to shoot somebody in the head and watch their brain. Exactly, paint this the is wall. what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we're a little bit, uh, you know, and, I miss and we wonder why we have a gun problem in this country. Yeah, right. Um, I was gonna say that that comment that I just brought up. I I think I could have eric and, and greg might go off on a 45 minute tangent so i was like maybe oh, we mike, should bring mike, this mike up mike would weigh in too Ma yes, would just yes. would. well now that yeah. mike's in florida i i mean you know sorry yeah yeah <laughs> how do you feel mike has it felt dangerous for you are you, are you feeling okay i haven't checked in on you i feel like i should have i apologize my particular area is not does not feel particularly dangerous uh, okay. everybody's a thousand years old here so not really you can issue. take them you can take yeah. them you can take them yeah but yeah. venture out you know 20 30 minutes in every direction any direction and yeah exactly exactly yeah, but that, that holds true for a lot of metro cities That's right true. like even portland you know you venture yeah. out yep. and um which is again a thing in itself all right so back to the forge <laughs> yeah <laughs> which i'll probably say like 20 times during this whole thing right um one of the things that i i had noticed in you know my very um <clears throat> elite podcast research that i always do <laughs> greg's like laughing because you know uh but it seemed like greg and eric you, you guys had this idea for a while it's always been in your head and both of you in separate interviews in separate places is like mike was the special sauce or the alchemy that brought this all together and i'd love an expansion on that and how how does it feel mike to be the special sauce <laughs> Wait, which order do you want to take it in? let's go with mike there's a, first there's a story here yeah. okay okay how does but it feel, how, to, how does be it feel sauce, to be the mike? special sauce mike it feels pretty great it feels like being the metal between two magnets kind of and making it <laughs> making it 
sort of all stick together. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice feeling when you you you're so into the book that you can't see anybody else ever having done it. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. I when you said metal between two magnets, uh, that could have been like yes, you know, it, you bring things together, or like you felt very stuck. <laughs> I, <Yeah>. I, I, <laughs> just, like, I just like I basically say. there was so much force uh, on each side <laughs> that um... a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. How All is right. that tracking device working out, Mike? So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, share the story then. Share the story. So Eric and I. I think this goes back to about 2015, 2016. And and we had been bouncing the idea. And I'm not sure how it initially came around, but the, the end result of that was, hey, let's do something pulpy with you know, with with uh with this squad of uh, of badass women in giant suits of planet destroying armor. Okay, great. And we we bounced some stuff around and I think had written some few pages and we had done some write-ups on members of the squad and we were looking for an artist and for the longest time we thought we were going to be we, we I had gone to Matthew Clark first and um and Matthew had indicated that he wanted to do it and he did some designs but for whatever reason and it stretched out over several years um nothing gelled right and he, 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 matthew kept going off to do other things and 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 there wasn't a unity of vision um like what eric and i had pitched and sort of envisioned matthew was not like somewhere between us and him and the pencil hitting the page um things weren't things were the message was was the being disrupted by the noise the signal was being lost and at that time and until fairly recently uh when mike decided he didn't love me anymore and left portland um there had been a very regular wednesday coffee date with me mike matthew uh and aaron duran and that goes back Matthew and I had been meeting for coffee for like 20 years once a week at this point. Like it's been a really long, long time. And I hadn't known Mike until Matthew had sort of brought him into the group. And we seemed to get along fine. We liked each other. And somewhere along the line, like it, 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 Eric and I kept being frustrated by the lack of progress. And then Matthew finally said, it's not for me. I can't do it. And I'm sitting there at coffee and I'm looking at Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I had seen, um, aside from his storytelling, right, uh, I had seen some of his sketchbooks and, and, and stuff he'd been putting up on Instagram. And some of his sketchbooks, uh, they're, they're these sort of uh, light bondage themed uh, image batches that he's been doing and that was sort of perfect for what we'd imagined for the cassandras and i remember sitting there and literally like the penny dropping and going oh hey would you be interested in this and, and mike's sort of looking at me and going uh yeah i mean sure i'll take a look and and that's how we got there but it had been i want to say a good three four years of us sitting on the idea and the wheel spinning um, before quite literally the thing I was staring at hit me in the face. Right. <laughs> um, you know, and I was like, oh, right, here's the solution to that problem. Um, and Matthew wouldn't mind me telling this. I mean, this is not disparaging Matthew or, or, or putting him in a bad light. Some things don't click. You know, Black right. Magic was originally supposed to be me and Michael Lark. Right. Oh. The idea for Black Magic predated Lazarus. Yeah. Okay. We were going to do Black Magic. And then when I brought Lazarus, I said, I'm working on this other thing. He said, that's the one I want to do. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, yeah. it, 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 it is it, one of the luxuries of, of the collaboration is, you know, being able to go, well, this isn't a good fit. What is? So, mm -hmm. 
And so, yeah, when we say he's the secret sauce, he is. This book doesn't happen without Mike. And not simply because he's drawing it and we can't, but it does <laughs> not happen. It does not happen without a, a, a collaborator who got it, was engaged by it, and was additive mm-hmm. because he's, you know, he, he doesn't take dictation, you know what I mean? And, and we don't want somebody to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is. It's just, it's got this really great uh, energy and having spent time with you all, you know, literally by just hanging out and like letting you hold, uh, asking you to hold my stuff in your booth or forgetting <laughs> things and Eric saving them for me. Like, you know, the book Stan Sakai gave me and then I left it there. And Eric's like, I saved this for you. I didn't think it belonged you. next to, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have such a ease of, um, synergy you know like the way you just kind mm-hmm. of everything kind of flows so um what is what is that collaboration uh process like so i know eric you and greg have definitely worked before of course um a lot <laughs> hand in hand yeah. um yeah. so kind of bringing in uh this team together and of course it's not just you three there's two other awesome humans too mm-hmm. but like what what it was how has that been for you eric kind of adding in you know the secret sauce but also just the whole collaboration since it's been so long it's been in your head and then now it's like wow we're on is it six we're on six we finished six uh, yep yes. six is yes. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. We finished this. i mean it's we're finally there this is years in the making and you're like it's here i can hold it <laughs> It is the most fun I've ever had in comics. Um, and that's, I know that's not an exciting story for other people, but for me, um, yeah, I can, <laughs> I, 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 I'm enjoying it. Um, I enjoy all my collaborations with, with Greg and part of what made me want to do comics in general was the idea of there being a small team making whatever the thing is, right? Um, Like his movies, don't like his movies. One of the things I admire about Kevin Smith is that he basically engineered a career where he gets to make fun stuff with his friends. He just gets to make stuff he likes with his friends. And that's basically my career now also. Um, So yeah, that's, you know, the... After the first issue where, like, I'd been aware of the stuff Mike had drawn in the past and I'd seen his design sketches for the forged and I had a pretty good idea of what we were going to get. There's still that unfamiliarity and that's always a little nerve wracking. Like is what's in my head going to end up on the page? Like Mike and, and, and Mike's pages coming in far exceeding anything that I had in my head. It was like, okay, I'm very comfortable with this now. You know, my, my, uh, I had one very bad experience on my very, very first comic series uh, where communicating what I wanted to the artists wasn't happening. So I'm always first first script with with a new guy I'm working with is always a little like I'm trepidatious because of my baggage, nothing to do with the the person I'm working with Um, and being able to go, okay, I can just pack that baggage up and send it on its way um, was extremely liberating. Um, Nice feeling. And it. Yeah, and it's it's certainly opened me up to being able to go, well, here's a crazy, wacky idea. I bet Mike will make this work beautifully, um, which I'm sure he, he gets those pages and goes, what's wrong with you? Um, which is sort of the goal state of the book anyway for me. Is uh, We were talking about hiding the books from our mothers, um, and uh, mom, is, uh, mom, mom gets every issue and reads them. And my <laughs> goal is once per issue... I get the email or phone call asking what the hell is wrong with you. That's that's and a hundred percent success rate so far. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I was going to uh, say, you didn't blame Mike. Like, no, Mike chose to put more oh nudity God, no, in this me. scene. Oh, <laughs> oh no. We've been, oh, no, we've no. been very no, my, tame. My, actually. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. all, uh, for, for, all, for all our talk about saucy naughtiness, um, we've, had only like i think what two or three full nudity one really sexually explicit image and even and 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 it's for a given value of explicit right. um we we have not really torn the band-aid off that um yeah. i'm not sure we actually will that's not something <laughs> okay. no because right. well because one of the things that that we're chasing right is that if you look at those issues of heavy metal, 
and or that issue of that story in epic that i was talking about right that's nothing it's a bare breath right it's it, it's the titillation factor and that sense that maybe this is a little naughty maybe it's transgressive in some way but you know i mean it, it, we're not you know we're not doing porn we didn't we, there are plenty of porn books out there that's fine i mm-hmm. mean I, again that yeah. you know everybody's mm-hmm. got a lane um but you know there's a sex scene in issue six that's off screen right 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 we don't show it mm-hmm. right there's no point there's no need all right um, yeah. The, the the raunchiest that issue actually gets is, you know, Vic slowly being stripped as she's fighting her way through the maze <laughs> to find the Empress skinny dipping in the magic pool at the center. Yeah. And even the Empress skinny dipping is, you know, yeah. is Mike has her artfully covered. So <laughs> very fair. Very right. artfully, very artfully. No, yeah, very, I, it, <laughs> I it's mean, it's all I don't about know being on the cusp. It. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't yeah. know if I'd say it's tame. I would just say that it's not like triple X rated. That it's appropriate. Well, it's, it's appropriate to the storytelling, which is totally in line with all of you as creators, right? Like it's it, you're not going to do anything just to be extra, right? It's all I, appropriate to the yeah. storytelling. And 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 that's kind of what I'm after. I look. I have a theory about um about reading about how people come to stories mm-hmm. um I, and it's anecdotal like i have no evidence for this but i sincerely believe and maybe it's simply because it was my experience right but if you can catch somebody at the right age where they encounter a piece of uh, of media you know a book a comic where they feel they're getting away with something reading it, right? Where they are encountering something that's like, oh, I shouldn't know about this yet, Mm -hmm. right? You've got them for life because they will be chasing that thrill forever. You know, I've I've told you this. My mom gave me a book called Murder on the Yellow Brick Road when I was in fifth grade. And it was given to her by a bookseller at a mystery bookstore in Santa Barbara, California, when she said, what do I give my fifth grader that would be, you know, he, he likes mysteries and he's already gone through Encyclopedia Brown. Right. <laughs> and this bookseller, either out of malice or ignorance, <laughs> handed over Stuart M. Kaminsky's Murder on the Yellow Brick Road, the plot of which is about porn movies being made on the disused sets for the wizard of oz it's set in like 1938 hollywood and the main character has sex in a dentist chair in it (laughs) i never went back the next thing i did after reading that was go to the library and find everything this kaminsky son of a bitch had ever written (laughs) hoping there would be more you know (laughs) yeah um but you can't put out the forge saying Slip this in front of your 12 year old and see what happens. You know? <laughs> They'll find um, their way to it. They're fine way to it. But you're right. That, There's that little <laughs> bit of a who, you know, or should I be reading this? Or even like yeah. when I'm on the plane, I mean, yes, the forged might be quote unquote tame and not, but there are some pages I'll flip yeah, to. I'm but, like, oh, I, I don't want anybody yeah. judging me or looking over my shoulder. Is that kid over there or whatever, right? There, there's still a moment where you kind of get a little bit of that heart palpitation, which is always exciting. And yes, it is. Um, yeah, that's where you want the window seat and you shift exactly. the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or to turn the, the contrast or the brightness yeah, down on my screen down. if it's on my screen and just I'm yeah, like I had one of those I had one of those on Saturday actually. I was I was I was watching the- a movie and unexpectedly naked woman and I was like, okay, great. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. You feel so exposed on the plane, right? Where it's like you can you get up to use the bathroom and you just look around without wanting to, and you can see what everybody's watching. And then because we're judgy as humans, we're like, oh, that news channel, or oh, they're watching that, or oh, they're watching this movie. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I've been on planes a lot lately. No, it's not so just maybe you. I'm just judgy. It's not just you. <laughs> mm, I do it too. <laughs> and then that's I why I think, oh God, are they watching what I'm watching? You know, kind of thing. So, um, and so uh, w- one of the things I think that will take us down, surprisingly, another tangent uh, is evil, right? Which is your evolved <laughs> virtual intelligence and logistics. And it's like, Greg has this habit of like, you know, telling the future in his comics and and his dystopian, his reality kind of thing. But it's interesting because, and maybe Mike can really weigh in on this as an artist, because it's like, was it last year, suddenly AI art became this controversial hot topic where I know it's been around, right? It's been around and it's been ever present the last several years, but it feels like very in your face lately, like AI. And then once chat GPT came out, then it's like, oh my God, AI is here. And, and we're, you know, the Cylons are here, that type of thing. Um, <laughs> it's a very, yeah. So it's interesting one, because of course you have it and it's, it's comical and, and evil and everything. And there's just so much there, but uh, it's interesting because it's super present, I think, in everybody's mind now. And as we go to read this comic, we have this, I don't know if we call it a character, right? But we have this existence, this evil, right? And so- yeah, no, um, no. Character. Character, yeah, yes. Sure. All right. So, well, for, for you, Mike, like, um, from an artist standpoint, like, what 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 was that like as, as AI started to come about? And then how much fun was it to kind of incorporate um, the evil character in the way that you've kind of been interpreting it? Uh, I don't do too much with evil because it's not a visual presence, right. really. And certainly the, the AI discussion wasn't a thing when we started this. It wasn't mm-hmm. really uh, something I was thinking about. And now I'm like, every panel will evil, will evil appears. I'm like, I'm drawing this. And if it goes on the internet, it's going to be pillaged and stolen and used and mined for something and scraped for data and train used to train other AI to copy my work essentially yeah it's spooky it's spooky yes yeah yes yeah, yeah. i think so i mean especially because we all especially i know greg and i like going through the whole union thing with contracts like it's been so ever present it's just like but it's kind of this force that it's not just here like it's not going away like it, this is the future of things that we're all going to be kind of confronting right and mm-hmm. i don't know in some ways, very negative. In some ways, I'm sure that there can be good to it. I don't know. Maybe Greg and Eric would disagree. <laughs> I don't know where we're at. No, I, I, too. I, I don't I, know. What are your thoughts? I, I am not anti-technology. I think, mm-hmm. one, it's not artificial intelligence. That's the first thing, mm-hmm. right? Like, we've been sold a bill of goods. And that's the biggest problem here is that Silicon Valley was looking for their next big thing, and they haven't had anything in a long time for them relative for them so they pushed something out and they called it something it wasn't and they did it before you know in typical silicon valley fashion before considering the ramifications the ethics and the morality of it right do, so do they not did build a terror nexus <laughs> exactly they they build a and 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 they did a fuck ton of illegal shit to do it mm-hmm. there's no way you can get around what they did as not plagiarism All right. They stole proprietary work from people without permission and exploited it. Okay. So there's a whole issue there. I talked to a guy this weekend who is in video games. And part of what we were talking about was that look, AI performance is something that they are incorporating into the model for the next 10 to 12 years. And it's going to change what they can do. Now they can do that responsibly and talking to them about it, it's clear that they're trying to, right? You work with your actors, you set the parameters of what the material can be used for, you set what they get paid for the extrapolations, right? You can do this. It's it's silly to say, no, it's all bad, right? But the flip side is also, like, it's broken the internet. The internet's now useless. It's literally, in less than six months, the internet as a research resource has died because you can't find actual information now. 
you're literally finding information that says, you know, a, a, the recipe for Toll House chocolate chip cookies requires one pound of nails. You know, I mean, it's just because they're fucking with the machines. It's easy to do. It's easy to muck up an algorithm. And mm-hmm. that's all these things are. They're not intelligence. Mm. They're just great big, I mean, enormously big data sets that are being processed. And Mm -hmm. it it takes very little to screw up that data set. Mm, Yeah. Right. All you have to do is get the number, you know, be off by one one thousandth of a decimal point and your rocket is not going to go to Mars. Right. And that's what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So. You know, it, it it's well. Once again, the desire uh, to you know engage in gross end stage capitalism overrode any consideration of ethical, mor- moral, or even common sense considerations. Mm-hmm. Will we self correct? Yeah. The idea of evil in the book, and we've actually had, a, I think, a letter or two about, like, you know, should we? Is evil going, is evil the big bad? And it's like, no, evil, this is not about artificial intelligence taking right. over the universe. Right. We named it evil. And Eric and I argue about which of us came up with it. Okay. Um, but and we right, named and it, it was Greg. <laughs> we named it evil because it's absolutely, one, it's funny. It's very it's funny. funny that, <laughs> it's very funny that you know in like in alien its mother right is the ai right this is i love the idea of vic having to have a conversation with evil right and and evil just i'm just a machine here providing answers that's all i do (laughs) i have no agenda other than to follow my programming (laughs) and and it's funny that they have to call the machine evil i think that that's a riot (laughs) <laughs> um and two we knew the second we did that it was going to be pro- provocative you know everybody's going to be like jesus christ they're calling the ai evil you know it's like <laughs> surprise so, yeah yeah well, it's it, funny it, and, and but yeah. the, the the whole charm of the whole thing and any ai in general where you kind of it's that human like interaction right because it's Mm -hmm. a character but it is it because right and so that there's that like you said it's provocative but there's that charm because you're having a conversation with something that you shouldn't be having necessarily having a conversation with it should be just like give me information but you Mm -hmm. end up having an actual relationship and this goes down a whole rabbit hole of so many different things and characters that Uh, it it tends to be eric who writes the interactions with evil for for, and it may just be because of the way it, it shakes out it's not i think so much by design but i love the fact that inherently evil is literal because machine and consequently argumentative like mm-hmm. the number of yes. times Vic has to tell evil to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and I love, I love the literal answer that evil can give. Like it's at the end of issue one of like, what the hell is happening to the radiant, you know? And it's like, mm-hmm. literally it is crashing. <laughs> you know? It's like, Oh yes, we can see that. Thank you, computer. Thank you for stating the obvious. You know? So. Uh, which actually kind of rolls into one of our Discord friend questions. Yay. We got Discord friend questions. We got Discord friend questions. Um, so one was literally, uh, uh, McGurk says, I'd like to hear more about the writing process and how the back matter slash world building is handled. So this is where you were saying, oh, Eric mostly does this or Greg does this. Like, how does that get kind of divvied, I guess, the question? I've been talking a lot. You you tell you, yeah. you, you give me me the answer here. And I, I mean, part of me wants to be glib and be like, uh, you know, it's it's sort of Greg and I having a good idea and then working on it so it becomes fuzzier and fuzzier until we end up telling the <laughs> editor Alejandro, just trust us, it'll be fine. Um, but that's that's not really accurate. Um, I mean, we've worked together on various projects since what oh six oh a little before yeah. that on the perfect dark novel but like in comics yeah. since oh six so is when years. i started doing yeah um so some of it is just familiarity um like we know each other's perceived uh strengths and weaknesses pretty well um greg maintains that he's 
he's uncomfortable with big action occasionally and i think that's bunk but whatever um <laughs> but uh um uh, so often a lot of the um and again um uh, the uh, process just breaks down to once we kind of know the broad strokes of, you know, Forge is going to be about these super soldier ladies in the future. Breaking down each issue, we often sit in his garage or get on Discord and kind of work the overall movement of each arc. And then for each issue, figure out what pieces need to be where and then kind of figure out and kind of discuss like, well, we'll I really want to write this scene. I have a good hook into what this moment, the, this moment should be. And you, you know, and then we'll basically just horse trade paper pages until we have a pretty tight outline of where we're going. Um, I'm probably glossing over or mildly misrepresenting something there. And Greg can correct no, me I, on, I, on what I I'm misstepping on, but that that's pretty close. We, we, we know where we're going, right? The forge is going to be 15 issues. It's going to be five, three issue arcs. And when we were done with the last, we were reserving the right to then maybe go off and do other stories or OGNs, depending on whether or not Mike wants to murder us and things like that. <laughs> um, but we know where we're going. And therefore, we have a five-act structure to the story, right? We have five arcs. We know what we're doing. So that that begins big. And then as we start talking about, okay, now this arc is the arc where X has to happen. Like we're starting here and we're ending here in the arc. And then in this issue, what are the, you know, and, and it breaks down component wise, what has to be accomplished in this issue. Um, when it works really smoothly, like the last issue we wrote, wrote like glass, glass yeah. like sliding on glass. So like on, on this last one, and ironically, you know, it's it's literally at our halfway point of writing the series. Right. We seem to have nailed our process down. Like we now know exactly how detailed the breakdown needs to be. Because what'll happen is, well, okay, we're on issue nine. We have to write issue nine. What has to happen? We're starting here. We're ending here. We know some of the cool things we want to do. We'll have a conversation about the scenes. We'll do a document that basically says, okay, this is the first sequence. It's going to run X many pages. These are the things that need to be accomplished in this sequence. And we do that for the entirety of the issue. And then we divvy it up. What scenes do you want? What scenes do I want? Um. And then when we're left with scenes that neither of us want, we're like, well, okay, I'll do it or whatnot. And that really doesn't happen. That makes it seem like we hit points where it's like, I don't want to do this. And that's that's not the case. Right. It's it's more like I really want to write this, or I think you'd be better at this, or yeah. you've got a better grip on it. And then we sort of horse trade the page count around. Right. Oh, you know what? I need two more pages for this. Can I get them off of you here? Right. And then ideally, ideally, we can give the whole script, all 44 pages of the book, to Mike at once so that when Mike reads it, he can go and be like, you know, I mean, you did this four page sequence and you're wasting a lot of real estate and I can do this in two pages uh, and okay. that'll give me two pages over here that I can play with. Yeah. One of the joys, and I've maintained this ever since starting it, working that image is that when you're doing a creator owned book, you control the page count, right? We don't have to put ads in. We don't have to have, you know, it's a 64 page book. We don't have to do 12 pages of back matter. We can do eight if we want to take four more pages for art mm -hmm. or whatnot, bearing in mind that any time there's an extra page of art, that's much more work for Mike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we we seem to have cracked it. We've got a process that this is that we. I've had some really great collaborations in comics, like Gotham Central is the obvious one, where that writing was almost always effortless with Ed. Yeah, it worked yeah. really really well. Um, I've had some collaborations that were not great. 
uh, in comics that were really, really challenging, uh, where it was clear we weren't on the same page. Yeah, this one is like this one's like Gotham Central. It's as easy as as working with that ever was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it feels seamless, and I always find it interesting when there's two writers because you're like, oh, I can't tell who does what. Like, Mike, can you tell when you get the pages? Like, who wrote what or? <laughs> Yes. Can you decipher? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't at first. I think it took me into like maybe early issue three, where I really knew who was oh. doing which and the dialogue. Okay. Now I can. I can pretty much tell. Okay. Yeah. All right. I yeah, was going to could... say the style of the script, though yeah. we have a similar epistolary style when we're scripting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you strip out the formatting uh, idiosyncrasies we have. So the document looks like a unified thing. I think it's probably a little harder to tell. Yeah. But if, if you read these things, you'll be like, oh, that's an Eric joke. Versus right. A Greg right. Joke. Well, the jokes, and, I think, maybe yeah. are are a little more standout. But I would say as as readers, it feels super seamless, especially when you, you know, you go back and forth between two story, three storytellers, rather, you know, it's like, oh, OK, um, it mm-hmm. all makes sense. But I was I was curious when Mike was getting it was like, oh, that's so Greg. Or, oh, that's so Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you go through I'm it, pretty it sure was... he does, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Roll your eyes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, the next question is is from our same um, that, friend, that, but it actually is for Mike. For us. It's a victory for us. It's a victory. But um, he says the combination of art format colors and colors really make this book stand out and the scope of the story and style of the characters feel big in a way that would feel cramped in a regular format book. Can you talk about the struggles and surprises of going magazine size? And um, while that's probably for all of you, I think in particular, Mike, with the with the art, because yeah. there are right. some really cool, you know, lack mm-hmm. of better term, centerful pieces <laughs> and things like that, that really add to the feeling of the book and all the themes that we've talked about today. Yeah, it's it's a lot of extra room to work, and I'm not sure. I didn't quite appreciate how much it was at first. I think it, it took me maybe half an issue to you know, 20, 30 pages before I really started to get to come to grips with how much room I had for everything, especially the big action pieces. Um, and I took a break at some point in there to do something at DC, and I was like, oh, my God, this this page yeah, so I was gonna small. Ask, <laughs> it was, I was going to ask ten. you going backward. Were you like, oh, no. <laughs> I did, yeah. And I was like, what is this this tiny little live area in here? And it's just, it's just draw so small. But I was working digitally, so it wasn't as big an issue. But okay. on paper, it's it's a big difference. I bet. Yeah. 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 So, but, but I did, do, you, do you have a preference? The magazine format is more work overall, I think. Um, but for this story, it was just, it's so suited for it that I can't imagine doing it any other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was, uh, intentional from the very start. I mean, that this was like, it was always going to be this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, once Mike was aboard, yeah. Um, I think initially when Greg and I were first kind of noodling around with the idea, I think we just envisioned it as a standard 22 pager, uh, just a normal comic, but, uh, I, I was an early uh, lobbyer for the magazine format because we had done that one variant for Black Magic number one in that size. Mm-hmm. And it afforded me as the designer on that one a lot of space to do. Like one of the things I despise is the graphic presentation of the from script to pencils to inks to final page transition that a lot of books do as bonus material. And it never looks good. It You know, it's always just like, here's a wall of text with little you never really get to see the art because it's too small and stuff and with black magic number one like oh i could finally do it the way i'd always wanted to see it done and i think it looked i mean i mean i know this is immodest but i think i did a really good job on it and so the idea of working in that format for the bonus material because i already had ideas of well let's put in maps and schematics and universe material and like having room to do that stuff and make it look really cool and not feel crammed into the back almost as an afterthought was very important to me um and uh, my recollection is that was there was not a lot of arguments. Like, well, what do you guys think about this? Like, All right. Which yeah. is sort of how the conversation went with Image when we asked them. So, um, yeah. you know, it just seems we like it was go meant back to and forth. We did go back and forth a little bit about 22 pagers versus 44 for a while. We, I don't mm-hmm. think we decided mm-hmm. until it was almost time. But, yeah, the yeah. magazine format was never really in question. 
Well, awesome. it was it, it it was aesthetically the right choice, you know, for 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 the feel of the book and everything, and and, and I think it was, um, I, I mean, I I don't I I think it was more than the a good choice. I think it was the right choice for this. Um. Yeah, uh, and and it's fun. It changes the writing when you have forty four pages and you're working in that format. I am more inclined to offer up because I'm greedy about page real estate. I'm more willing to say, yeah, this is a splash or this is a DPS or let's let's try to let's try to tell the story, you know, on a spread. Um, I don't tend to do that. Mm. Um, and one of the many pleasures in working with Mike is if you say, hey, here's the sequence and here are the pages, um, he'll come up with a beautiful way to tell the story yeah. that I could never have written. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, okay, those choices are better. Those are better choices. Yeah. So, 100%. Nice. Well, it, and, yes, and, and, it's gorgeous. And it's worth, it's worth shouting this out. Um, Nolan's coloring is outstanding. I mean, yes. it's, it's unbelievably good. Um, and, you know, it, it, working in this format allows not just Mike to show off, but Nolan to show off. And it actually, I think, highlights what Ariana is doing with the lettering. I mean, it, 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 yes. more space, more room gives them all more opportunity to, uh, to sort of show their stuff. And you don't get that a lot in, you know, normal size, 22 page comics, you know, which are, you know, according to DC now, what they're down to 16, I guess. I don't know. Um, you know, we've got, we've got room. And mm-hmm. and it's nice to be able to fill it with stuff that is nice on the eyes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. As as again, selfish as I always am as a view, <laughs> as a reader, it's always like, yes, this is awesome. And there is something really great about all of it, like you said, from the color to the lettering to the art, and the it's like all coming together and literally like. Um, I'd even think from from the very first one, because I know sometimes when you have a collaboration of people you haven't worked with before, or there's a lot of different moving pieces, there's a little rhythm that you feel like you need to get into. Whereas I feel this one was just there right away. Like, I don't feel like one to six. You're like, oh, they're really there now. You know, like, oh, they're, we're warmed up. But it felt, it felt really from the get-go, like it, it's just been dying to be told, dying to be uh, drawn and and there. And so it's, it's really nice to kind of see it all come together. And it's just so much fun. Like when Greg and I first talked about it, he's like, oh, it's silly. I'm like, I wouldn't call it silly. It's fun. It's definitely fun. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm all for silly. I think I know, books need to I be well, fun. Yes. And I think I think there are elements of it, like you said, the jokes and things like that. It's definitely not taking itself too seriously. But I know we're almost on time. And one of the things I I, you know, I, I'm that I'm I'm more of a silent Discord member. I'll occasionally say what's up, but I, I did read through kind of thinking about this podcast and um we had some questions, but I know one of the things people were curious about were war names. And I think Eric answered the question saying, like, oh, you know, they're they're given to um, the the person and everything. I was curious if you all have your own war names or you've given each other war names uh, <laughs> in the forged war world, or if not, you could do so no. now. <laughs> oh God! Oh man! I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna call dibs on tired guy. Can I can I call <laughs> dibs on that? Cranky. Cranky. Yeah. Cranky. Yeah. War name Cranky. <laughs> right write that down that's going in something yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well we can we can hash this out this is um so our, our listeners can go oh this is what a brainstorming session with the forge team is yeah. like yeah so yeah. uh in deciding the war names for eric and greg they're just calling each other you know themselves their own names i don't know mike's oh kind God. of silent here <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean war name Diligence. Mm. I would think. I think. I think. I think Mike gets diligence. It could be diligence. Diligence. workhorse, maybe workhorse. Workhorse. Cool. I, I thought. I, I actually thought about workhorse. I don't like workhorse. 
I mm. think I think workhorse is um, no offense to the workhorses out there, but I think it's a little um, disparaging to what you bring. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Thanks for that. <laughs> You're I, like, go I, on. I, discipline <laughs> might work too. I, yeah, Fair I enough. think he's very focused. Morning discipline. You know? Got it. Yeah. No, no seriously. Like he, he, no, I, look, I, I've, there are, I've been doing this for many years now. There are some collaborators <laughs> who, you know, everybody at this point knows that Michael Lark is not the fastest car in the garage. Okay. <laughs> um, he, he it, it, the work is beautiful. Yes. Yes. But he ain't an indie car. <laughs> right. Um, I've been working on a book with Cully since 2018. Okay. Um, once Mike gets going. Yeah. Eric and I, we should always be ahead of him. <laughs> <laughs> we should always be ahead of Mike. We are ahead of him right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> challenge, Mike. I, I hear that. Oh, no, no. And, no, no. It, 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 and, and, and not for much longer. And the <laughs> only grace we're going to get is that I do not. Act, well, actually, no, I'm telling you right now. I, I don't care if you're done by Christmas. You're not getting anything till after New Year's. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that it's sort it. of thing. But he's, seriously. He's, he's, He's probably done 10 pages since we've been talking. Right. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all of my feet right that, now. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. I was I was privileged to be able to just hover over him at the RCCC table while he was he was drawing. And I'm just like, wow, that that you did that whole thing just now, like just this moment. And you're like, yeah, you know, I've got two, I got two more to do. I'm like, what? I, I always find the the art process like amazing, especially those that can do it with distraction and all this kind of crazy and what you guys are able to sit at the table. So I believe it. I believe that when he's actually ha doesn't have any distraction, I can't imagine the speed at which he's, he's drawing because I saw it yeah, live. No, he's, he's, what was he's, happening. He's, 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 he's terrifyingly disciplined in that regard. Terrifyingly um, disciplined. War name. I like it. Good morning. <laughs> no, like I said, discipline. Discipline. So, okay. Okay. It, it works as a nice double entendre too, so that that's in keeping. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> and you're still going yeah. with tired guy, Eric. That's yeah. a true. It's a true. Joke. I, I like sleepy. Cranky. Not cranky. Cranky, fine. cranky. Okay. What about Greg? Greg needs a name. <laughs> Greg is not giving himself a name. No, I know. I was, That's somebody I was leaning on job. Eric and Mike to do so. <laughs> we could. They're yeah. having to be real careful here because everything they're thinking of is like, ooh, that no, that would be too mean. <laughs> you <laughs> too know, much, too much. Rucka, Rucka yeah. says it all. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're at the we're at the panel. While you guys are thinking, I'm I I, I would love for you to come up with something. While we're at the panel and Greg comes down, he's like, We'll just start and whoever's here, they know what's going on. And you know, they got a ruck rent within like half like 30 seconds and they were like so happy because you know they were clearly and i thank you i thank you the audience that showed up and clearly yeah. listeners of the mimi and greg show <laughs> and they were just like will there be a rant in five minutes one minute and they had it right off the bat they really so didn't really, have to wait did they, they didn't have to wait at all really it was pretty didn't exciting. have to wait at all yeah. oh, there it is yeah ranty there we go ranty <laughs> ranty there you go ranty. Rant. i'm cranky Ranter. you're ranty and Okay. Discipline. The discipline. The discipline. Yeah, there you go. I which sort love of is it. the whole relationship right there. So <laughs> there you go. well, I'll tell you what, it works. Whatever it is, it works. So cheers and congratulations to all of you. I'm so um so happy that uh we're Thank able you. to all benefit from this collaboration. And if you haven't yet, listeners, pick up the forge. You pick can catch up. up. You can pick catch up, up before the next arc in April where we will talk again. And I'm going to schedule oh now God. so we can keep rescheduling until then and, it, and it'll all work out. But it, 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 There's some merit to it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so Eric, Mike, and Greg, thank you so much. I know juggling Thanks schedules and time me. zones is crazy, but awesome to see you all. Um, nice to see you. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Until next time, everybody. Thanks for being on the show. Bye. Thanks, Bye. me. 
That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram or Facebook.